I want to talk with you about how we define these metrics. Uh, what aspects of sustainability should an organization measure, which I think is one of the critical issues that we have to think about. And then the relationship of these sustainability metrics to the organization's general performance measurement and management system. The challenge is going to be to integrate. So we have to develop these new ways of looking at the world and of organizational performance. But then after a while, it's going to be very important that they not be seen as something separate. Oh, that's just the way we manage around here. Nothing different than our routine and really part of other types of metrics. What are the methodological issues raised by measuring sustainability? And I hinted at that before, the complexity of this issue, why it's important to do this, and, and what, what does this all lead us to conclude with? So how do we define sustainability <coughs> metrics? So since this is a course in sustainability management, I'm going to have to give you a definition. So they are an organization or jurisdiction's indicators of resource utilization, waste reduction, and pollution discharges into the environment. So I'm being very focused here. There's a lot of other things people might measure. In fact, in our case study, they talked about a bunch of other things. I'm going to try to focus on these three things. Now, according uh, to one set of authors that I'm quoting here, uh, it includes material intensity, energy intensity, water consumption, toxic emissions, and pollutants. They're actually separating pollutants into toxics uh, and other pollutants, because po and toxics being those pollutants that are most intense that can poison life uh, relatively quickly, where some pollutants can simply change things, not always for the better. Some forms of pollutants are really having too much of a good thing, uh, too much nutrient too much nutrition uh, in a lake creates uh, a set of environmental impacts that you don't want. But that's different than taking plutonium and dropping it off in the middle of the lake. One of them is very toxic immediately, and the other is simply a pollutant. There are no agreed set of sustainability metrics. Everyone has their ideas about what's important, and we should all expect that this is going to evolve uh, for quite a while. So let me focus on the aspects that I think an organization should measure. And I should really say that these are starting points. I'm really working, and I do this uh, here, and I do this a little bit in my writing. I'm trying to create some boundaries knowing that people are going to take pot shots at it, OK? And that's OK. That's really how these things start. That's how they evolve. So I don't want you to think, oh, he said it was this, therefore that's true. Uh, and in, in your final exam, I'm not going to have a set of true or false uh, questions or multiple choice questions related to this. In fact, there won't be any true or false questions or multiple choice questions anywhere in this course, in part because we simply don't have that level of information here. So material intensity is the first. Pounds of material wasted per unit of output. In other words, what is it that we're throwing away that doesn't go into the product. Okay, that's one element of material intensity. But also, is there a design for reuse? Does the product have the potential to be returned for remanufacturing, or is it used up after it's used? Is there some element of it? When you think about material intensity, one of the questions is, is, this, is it possible to recycle this? Are the materials being used for this product renewable or mined from one-time geologic resources? So, it's not, so part of it's, can it be used again? But part of it is, is this something that we don't have to worry about whether it's recycled because we can make more of it because it's essentially solar uh, and organic in its, in its orientation. So that's material intensity. The second area is energy intensity. And this is expressed as BTUs per unit. It's a measure of the net fuel energy consumed to provide the heat and power requirements of the production process. OK, so that's energy intensity. Also, again, renewable versus fossil fuels. So it's not just how much energy, what's the source of the energy, uh, and also uh, the efficiency of the use of the energy. In other words, how much of the energy uh, in the production process 
could have been uh, recovered. So we'll have a production process that uses, say, $1,000 worth of electricity, but it turns out 600 of that was wasted. It was waste heat that went up the stack, and we could have used it. Uh, we could have used that energy for some other production process if we had recovered it. So these are all factors, the energy intensity that is related to sustainability. Third factor is water consumption, expressed as gallons of fresh water excluding rainwater consumed per unit of output. How much water does this stuff use when we're making it? Okay. Uh, other factors, though, again, with water, the reuse of the water. What's the, the discharge? When you release that water into the environment, can it be reused or is it hopeless? Is it now water that can't be used for drinking or for uh, growing plants? Also, uh, can we improve the efficiency through improved transmission, reduced evaporation, in the case of plants, more efficient plants in their root structure? So water consumption is an issue uh, that we have to measure. Uh, toxic emissions expressed as pounds of toxic materials emitted by the process per unit of output. Okay, now these are all quotations from the, the work that I've cited here that I hope you've taken a, a look at. Toxic chemicals are defined by a number of pieces of US legislation. We've gone through a number of regulatory processes to decide what's toxic and what isn't. But other factors that need to be considered when you're thinking about toxicity is the degree of toxicity, the treatment technology. Do we have a way of dealing with it? And also, even most importantly, in my view, is pathway of exposure. Is this a toxic that very easily gets into uh, people's homes and then into their biological systems? Is there, you know, or are these toxics that, uh, once they're released, have less of a capacity to uh, impair people's homes and lives. Okay, so those are all factors that you have to think about. And then there's pollutant emissions, which can be expressed as pounds of pollutants emitted by the process per unit of output. For every car, there's X amount of pollution. For every, uh, you know, for every watch, there's X amount of pollution. So you want to measure that. How much, how many, what kind of emissions are there? Now that's for greenhouse gas emissions, but for other uh, air pollutants also, uh, sulfur dioxide, uh, other kinds of, of, of some of our more traditional pollutants, let's call it. Um, then we want to think not just of the pollution emissions, but what's the health impact? And are the health impacts things that we can do something about? Um, or are they uh, things that we can't do anything about? If the impact is asthma, uh, is that something that's treatable uh, versus the impact being uh, cancer, which while it's treatable, perhaps is less treatable. So we actually have to look at those things. Now, this, this may sound a little brutal, but those are in fact things you have to judge. How bad is this stuff is a question you have to ask and has to be answered. And other factors are, you know, the issue of sustainability can differ by geography. Okay, you can have a landfill in a desert and it's going to have less of an environmental impact on the surroundings because it's not going to do much to groundwater. You put a landfill, you know, you, you know, or you, you know, if you try to hydrofrack uh, gas uh, by the watershed, that's a little bit different than if it's in a place that doesn't have a lot of groundwater. Not to say you should do it in either place, but that is something a sustainability metric would help you uh, to measure and to weigh along with other kinds of issues. Um, and then you have to weight all this stuff, water, energy, toxics, pollutants. What's more important as we develop the measures for our organization in this place? All of which is gonna vary by what we do, where we are, and what the human settlement patterns are around us, okay? Now again, I said human settlement patterns. There are people who would say, well, that's unethical. We should worry just as much about the bees and the ants as about people. Well, I know that there are people who believe that, and I, I think that that is an ethical choice that they make. Um, I don't make that choice. Uh, I'm more concerned about people. So those are the problems in measurement. I mean, just think about what I've just laid out. You know, all of these different issues and all of these complexities and how do you measure that in an organization? 
Now, having laid out how complex it is, let me just say that organizations do this all the time. You have to measure what an organization does. You have to measure its performance. This is an aspect of its performance that's gonna, gonna become more and more important in organizational management, in part because of the regulatory environment, because government's gonna make people do it, in part because resources themselves are becoming contaminated and scarce, and we have no choice because otherwise we will degrade the resources that provide us with wealth. Government may lead us to do that, but corporations themselves may see the importance of doing it, and some of them already have. And then this is cultural change, which I think is taking place, which is to say that, you know, how do we define criminal activity in, an, in a society? It's a cultural <coughs> definition, okay? You know, in one society, you know, you pay the trucker you know, $1,000 a month to make sure your truck doesn't get, uh, let's say, hijacked, okay? In some societies, that's the cost of doing business. In other societies, that's corruption, okay? Those things are socially defined. Well, what we're seeing is that increasingly, and we saw a little bit of this in the Starbucks case before, that the social definition of a well-run corporation is becoming a sustainable corporation. You and your friends don't want to work for a company that is doing evil. What's the Google motto? Don't, don't be evil. Don't do evil. Don't be evil. Okay? Now, they're, they're serious about that. They actually think about, is what we're doing somehow uh, adding to pain and misery in the world? Okay? That's become important to people, and that's going to be helpful as we develop sustainability measures. What's the relationship of sustainability metrics to organizational performance uh, and management systems? Now, as the organization learns these new indicators that need to be developed, as we figure out what we want to focus on, as we come up with these metrics, then they have to be developed, collected, analyzed, and reported, at first separately from routine indicators, but then they eventually have to be integrated. They have to be part of routine management. A key indicator of success, in fact, is going to be the ultimate invisibility of distinct sustainability metrics. There needs to become a time when we actually look at sustainability metrics just like we look at market share, return on equity, profit, and other more non-financial performance indicators, like you know, how many things have we produced, um, what's been the cost of breakage, um, all sorts of indicators that organizations put in, and what's, what, are, what are our customers saying, how many complaints do we have, what's the level of satisfaction, how much repeat business. You think about all the things an organization measures itself against. Now in the public sector, these can be things like test scores in, in a school system. They can be things like graduation rates. Uh, they can be indicators, uh, widely ranging sets of indicators, number of homicides, uh, number of misdemeanors, um, the, number of the, the amount of time it takes to respond to a fire. All of these kinds of indicators are how organizations are managed. We, managed and we define success and manage organizations around these indicators, okay? So when we created the Masters in Sustainability Management, one of our indicators of success is how many applications did we get? How many people did we admit? We want to make sure we only admit about no more than half the people that, that apply. And then how many of those people come? Well, we want at least half of those people to show up. You know, those are all indicators of success. Now, in the program, once it begins, we don't want to see people dropping out because they hate it. Okay, so our retention and attrition rates are indicators of success. Organizations run against metrics all the time. And so what this is saying is we need to add sustainability indicators to that mix. It's very straightforward what we're trying to do, but it's very hard. So it leads me to the fourth issue for today. What are the methodological issues raised by measuring sustainability? Now, part of the problem is when you, when, you can, when you develop a measure, you want the measure to be reliable and valid. Reliable means that every time you do the measure, you're measuring the same thing. 
You don't change it. You don't change the goalpost. You don't change the scoring system in the middle of, of the measurement. You, you don't decide, oh, this isn't going too well. Uh, let's change the criteria. Okay, that's, that's a, a measure that's, that's not reliable. And then they have to be valid. You have to measure what you actually think you're measuring. Okay, and when you, so that's the creation of the measure itself. But then once you decide what you want to measure, then you have to collect information. You have to collect information uh, in the same way. You know, there was a story, I think it was the, the New York Times has a, has a blog, I think it's 528 or something like that, or 538, the number of, of, of people in the Congress. Uh, it does their, it's their political uh, polling-oriented website. And they were talking about, uh, I think it was Rasmussen, the polling company, and they discovered that methodologically they had the worst polls during this election. Uh, they were off more than anybody else. And they looked at how they were collecting their information. One of the things you do when you do polling is you have to randomize at the place of, you know, when, like when you make the call, you have to say, you have to decide you want to talk to the oldest female in the house. And so if the oldest male in the house is there, you say, no, no, I need to talk to the oldest female. Well, she's not here. You hang up, you got to go to another person. That's how you randomize at the household. Apparently they don't do it. Uh, they do a few other things uh, in their methodology. So how you collect information has a lot to do with the quality of the information that you collect. Now when you're new at something, when you're starting something for the first time and you don't have a lot of experience collecting it, you make mistakes. I mean, you make mistakes because you don't quite know how to ask the question. You don't quite know how to calibrate your measurement tools. And so as you're doing it, you have to learn. So after a while, you figure it out. You get better at it. You know, you get better at taking the measurement. And so eventually, uh, the, your collection system works better. So you need to understand that the second method issue here is the experience and skill in collecting information itself. And then sometimes it's hard to know what to measure. You know, we just went through all those other measures, right? The whole field of sustainability, water, energy, material. So what's more important in our area? And then how do I weight them? Are they all equal? Is some more, is some more important to my product or my organization than others? You know, in a service business, uh, does it really, is, there, is material intensity as important for example, is energy intensity? Probably not. But how much more important? Take a company like Starbucks, at a very interesting point before. Uh, is this a service business that creates ambience and the coffee's incidental? Or is it a coffee company and the service is incidental? Judging by the service I've been getting, I think the service may be incidental, but no. Uh, the question here is you have to make that decision as you create your measurement system. And, you have to, and what you decide to measure then the, and the definition of success has a direct impact on the behavior of the organization. That's why this is so important. You know, in the school system, when we start focusing on taking tests, teachers start teaching to the test. They don't care whether the kids are learning, they care whether they're performing well on the test. Now, if the two things are the same, great. But if they're not, you've got a problem. So measurement is not neutral, and it's certainly not neutral within the organization. Okay, so you need to understand that as you think about sustainability indicators and this issue of cherry picking indicators. You look to see what are we doing good at? Let's emphasize that. It makes us look more sustainable. And particularly with the emphasis on greenwashing, you have to watch for that. Weighting indicators in an overall scale can, in can introduce bias. And as we want to come up with an overall sustainability measure, like the gross national product, like market share, like the bottom line, okay? What's it gonna be? How do we put that number together? How do we weight it? So that's an issue that's still out there. And I think will vary by organization, by geography, by product, by service, by what the organization's distinctive competence is, what is it trying to, trying to do? In some cases, qualitative factors may be just as important as those things that you can measure. Some of the sustainability issues that are important to you aren't subject to measurement yet. You know, the fair trade issues you were describing before, which aren't part of my measurement of sustainability, but might be part of yours, how do you measure that? How do you measure satisfaction? How do you measure then, if you're comparing 
material intensity to water intensity to energy intensity, which is more important. But management has to make these decisions. And was one of the critical issues for a manager is to decide what's the definition of success and how will we know if we got there. So in sustainability, it's the same thing. What's the definition of a sustainability success for our organization? And what are the indicators that I, as the manager, am going to use to measure against as we seek to perform it? So despite all of these problems, and I, I don't think I've been <laughs> shy about introducing them to you, uh, sustainability metrics are essential. We really have to figure out how to do this. We need to develop a way to operationally measure success in this area. Measurements force precision in defining goals and then force precision in the actions to achieve those goals. Now, sometimes that means you make mistakes. Some of the first efforts at measuring performance in organizations were uh, led organizations astray. Uh, the classic uh, was actually in the military during the war in Vietnam. One of the first quantitative performance indicators used by Bob McNamara, who was Secretary of Defense, was body counts. They measured how many people were dying. They forgot something. Uh, so they saw how many Americans were dying, how many Vietnamese so soldiers were dying. Uh, what they didn't understand is that our tolerance for loss was a, quite a bit uh, lower than the Vietnamese because they were defending their country. And so if they lost a million or two million soldiers in the defense of their homeland, they were going to put up with that. If we lost 50,000 soldiers, we weren't going to put up with it. So the real measure of success probably should have been territory held or should have been something else besides body counts. But uh, you know, it looked like a good measure. It seemed pretty important at the time. It just happened to be wrong. Now, organizations always allocate scarce resources. All, all organizational resources are always scarce, and they allocate them to focus on goal achievement. There's always a competition for the time and energy of the people who work in an organization. And so that's the other reason you want sustainability indicators. By creating those indicators, you then get into the competition for money and people in an organization. Okay. If you don't have those sustainability indicators, then you know, people will be managing the organization against other factors. And so it's absolutely essential to develop these indicators or this activity will not continue in an organization. So that's the, the bottom line, frankly, of why these measures have to be developed. The process of defining and improving organizational routines, which is what we're talking about, to make sustainability happen in an organization has to begin somewhere. Sometimes it begins with a small step, something that you can def get your arms around, you can define. So let's say it's, let's reduce energy use. Okay, let's just reduce our electric bills. Okay, that will make us a more sustainable organization. You see that happening. People are putting in different kind of light bulbs and they're putting in uh, you know, uh, electronic devices to control when the air conditioning comes on and when it goes off and motion detectors and all of those kinds of things. Once the initial sustainabilities are developed, they can be applied, they will be, and then they can be refined. So the indicators themselves are symbolic in its early stages in, in convincing people in the organization, oh, we're now being managed against this. We're going to be asked how much water we use, how much electricity we use. We might even be asked how much garbage we're producing and how much we're recycling. Maybe we'll weigh it. You start with the simple stuff, the stuff that uh, we know uh, are relatively easy to do. And then as time goes on, you'll see the measurements become uh, more sophisticated. Uh, benchmarking and learning new organizational routines from other organizations is essential in new uh, management areas like sustainability. And so what you're going to see is a lot of people borrowing from each other, people going to other organizations and trying to figure out, well, how do they do it at Starbucks? How do they do it at Walmart? Uh, let's see. Let's try to imitate that. Let's see if that'll work here. Uh, eventually, you're going to start seeing the indicators get more common and in more general use. You know, We saw this actually in the financial world 
with the development of generally accepted accounting practices. Now, those practices were not the first set of accounting practices. Those are the ones that developed over time as more and more organizations started to use them. You're going to see the same thing, I believe, happen here. So what does this lead us to? Well, first, you know, as I talked about during our class on performance management, which is part of the first few weeks we went through all of the tools of management, in order to manage something, you have to measure it. Without measurement, you can't tell if what management's doing is making it better or making it worse. So measurement's essential. Very often, though, when you start measuring something for the first time, you make mistakes. And so what's really important is that we program in organizational learning, that we evaluate this, that we tr keep trying to relate it to goals. The other thing that happens in organizations is things get ossified. People get in, they say, this is how we measure sustainability around here. I don't care how they do it at Walmart. We're going to do it this way. That's a bad thing. You want this change to take place early on. We have a lot to learn and need to be open to listening, observing, and changing our sustainability strategies and the way we measure the su success of sustainability itself. So, and I've made this point a number of times today that this is new. We don't really know what we're doing yet. We know that it needs to be done. And I've actually seen, I mean, in, in doing the book Sustainability Management and in preparing for, for this session and for others, there's been a fair amount of development in the last 10 years. An enormous amount of progress has been made. A lot of ideas that, that were there at the very beginning of this literature have already uh, been set aside by, I think, improvements, and you're going to see a lot more.